Hanging out here at Harley Davidson with Miguel Torres. How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. You know, seeing all these wonderful bikes make me want to buy one. Well, let's just talk about your fight coming up. UFC 139. I got a fight against Nick Pace. Yeah. Uh, November 19th mm -hmm. in uh, San Jose. I'm um, looking forward to fighting in front of the crowd. Uh, it's been a while since I fought my last fight. I lost against Demetrius Johnson, the yep. decision. Uh, I thought I won the fight. So did a lot of other uh, fans and uh, MMA outlets. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to really go out there and try to fight a specific game plan against my opponent. I haven't even studied any film on him. I'm just going to go out there and, and fight the old style I used to fight and go out there and be very aggressive and uh, just bring a high intense fight. Now, you're changing up your training camp for this one. You're going back to East Chicago, is that right? Yeah, it's not really, I didn't really change my camp. It's just uh, I've been through a lot the past, you know, a couple of months in my gym. I started a new business. Uh, sure. Just a lot of things that don't allow me to leave uh, the area for a long time. I'm going to be in Montreal for two weeks. But uh, the, mo the majority of my camps have been at home. So a lot of guys, very good wrestlers, Darren Elkins, Bobby Jamal Lonato, a lot of good uh, buddies of mine come down to help me and train. And uh, you know, I feel very confident for this fight. I feel very ready. It's just uh, the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to doing is just getting back to my roots. The guys up in Montreal, Faraz Sahabi, known for putting together good game plans and very specific game plans. You just mentioned that you're completely abandoning that there. What's the thinking? I mean, I'm not abandoning it. I'm, I'm not going to abandon it. It's not so much of me letting it go. I'm just, uh, I'm not totally focusing on, on, on finding a specific way to, to make a certain type of fight happen. Um, if I feel like I can be more aggressive and I can go out there and put the fight away, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to, you know, sit, sit back and coast and, and just play points. Do you feel like you need to go out there and be more aggressive to be the best Miguel Torres possible? Uh, no, I, I don't feel like I have to. I just, it's in me to do that. And, uh, you know, I've been controlling that a lot, trying to fight smarter and fight safer. But uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of times where I want to let that, let that loose and, and just let it go. And uh, I just think, you know, fan-wise, fans want to see it. It's in me to let it go, and I'm going to just uh, give them what they want. If you look back at the past couple of years, I mean, your, your record was unbelievable. Everyone had you in the top five pound for pound in the entire world. And then things just kind of, you lost a couple of fights. Was there anything that you did that caused that? Or was that just because of bad luck in current situations? I don't believe in luck. I just think it was a situation for what it was. Um, I wasn't used to, to the kind of attention or that kind of hype or that. Yeah, I was, no one in my family's ever fought. No one in my camp had fought before. So everything was new to me. And uh, traveling, training on the road, you know, all those different things that come along with being a champion, all that stuff was new to me. Did you get caught up in it? You always get caught up in it. You know, for me, I think, you know, the biggest thing for me was just getting used to all the traveling. You know, being on ESPN, doing that show every week, and then just, just doing stuff for Echo and doing stuff for the UFC. And that, that fight for Bowls, I think I trained like at home two weeks. And the rest of the time I was on the road. How hungry are you to prove it again to the world that you're the best in the world at 135? I'm extremely hungry, you know. And it's not just me, it's my fans. You know, I hear from all my, I was at the Expo today all day, and all my fans tell me all the time they want to see me with the belt again. They want to see me with the title again. And, uh, you know, I feel like I, I lost that title in a bad way, and I, just, I want to make it up in a bad way. There's wins and there's losses. You know, no one can win forever. There's always somebody better out there, somebody more hungry, somebody that has, you know, you're, you're on the radar for a long time more than, we, than what you're looking at them. So as a fighter, I didn't feel bad because I knew I was going to come back and I was going to get better. But to know my friends, my family, like to let down all my fans, that was the worst. That was like the worst hurt came from that, let, let, letting them know that I couldn't pull it out for them. Seems like you have a real connection with your fans. I do 100% I do. I mean, I feel like my fans made, me, my, made my career what it is. My fans and my family. So when I win a fight, I win it for them. And when I lose a fight, I feel like I let them down. Harley Davidson is giving fans the opportunity to bring the UFC to their hometown with the hometown throwdown. What is it like when you're around people that you know are really supportive of you when the UFC rolls into Chicago in your case, you know, very close to your hometown? It's the greatest feeling in the world. You know, when you go out to a fight and you know you're in your hometown and everyone there is, you know, cheering you on and, you know, Bruce announces your name and everyone gets real crazy, it's, it's an indescribable feeling. You know, no amount of money, nothing can, can compensate for that. That's something that's indescribable. How much of an asset is it to have the fans behind you? It's a huge asset because it motivates you when, the, when your chips are down or when you're getting hurt or when you feel like you're not doing right and, and the crowd gets behind you, it rallies you up and it just gives you that extra oomph. Tell us about UFC fans. I mean, they're pretty, a pretty vocal crew, right? UFC fans are totally different than WC fans. You know, the biggest thing with the UFC fans is they want to see action. Yeah. So you can be winning a fight in a smart, strategic way, but if you're not getting them the action they want, they're going to let you know about it. So the biggest thing is, you know, when you're in your home crowd, they're going to support you no matter what. So you're pretty confident that the fans having the power to bring the UFC to their hometown, something they're going to get behind too. 100%. I think the fans can sway the fight, you know, for their, for their hometown fighter, 100%. I really believe that.